support Lightning Debate on Patreon. Hi guys, Jeff here. So again, I'm switching lanes another time, and this time I'm going to be covering the policy topic that's out for this year. So I just wanted to dip my feet into it and give my thoughts on the upcoming policy topic. So let's just get right into it. Okay, so the policy topic for this year is the United States federal government should substantially reduce its restrictions on legal immigration to the United States. So let's break down the meaning of the topic and how that's going to affect your cases. So the United States federal government, so that's fairly self-explanatory. It means the affirmative needs to have the U.S. federal government as an actor, which could represent a multitude of entities that has actors in the resolution. Most popular, I believe, in this resolution is going to be Congress as an actor, making a bill into law. After this, you're going to see executive orders by the presidents or bureaucratic policy shift, for example, from ICE or the FBI. And the least likely actor in this situation is probably going to be the Supreme Court because of the Supreme Court's lack of ability to be proactive in the initiatives, the stance that they could take. They need to have a court case brought to them in order to actually make any action. However, there are link chain scenarios that I could see potentially happening. However, I don't think that's going to be a part of the meta. All right, substantially reduce. This is really vague. I'm not even going to lie. It's super vague. So you're going to have to, A, on the, your app, you're going to have to define substantial because what is, it's going to have to be pretty big for you to be able to really meet that criteria. criteria. But how big is big enough is really up to you. So I just say go as big as you possibly can without being outrageous, but it's this is a case meaning that your case needs to go big or go home. So just letting you know right now, that's the part of the resolution that's really going to stand out. All right. Another thing to know, this is dealing with legal immigration, not illegal immigration. So illegal immigration disads are not going to be resolutional. And so it's another thing to make sure that your evidence is consistent with aspects of legal immigration and not illegal immigration because those two get easily mixed together in uh, the evidence that you might find. And obviously elephant in the room are illegal Mexican immigrants, but those aren't the sole subject of the debate, as I'm sure most of you are aware, but I just wanted to get that out of the way. All right, now like on the previous slide, we are reducing restrictions, not giving freedom. So we're not giving rights to people who are, elite, who are legally immigrating, excuse me. We're talking about reducing the restrictions on immigration and on illegal immigration in the status quo. So you have to make sure that when you reduce your restrictions, you're reducing them to a large degree. Okay, so potential arguments. This is the part of the video that I'm pretty sure most of you are excited for. So the first one that came to mind was increasing H-1B. There have been public, oh, it was a public forum topic about it last year where they specifically talked about the H-1B visa and the visa system. And there are probably a lot of evidence that they're on the public forum side and the public forum briefs, if you are willing to explore on how to tackle on the intricacies of the visa system and how increasing H-1B would be reducing the restriction because at the current time of this writing, there is a cap on how much H-1B visas are allowed each year. So by increasing the cap, you're thus re decreasing the restrictions on the legal immigration. And since about 200,000 people a year apply for H-1B visas and only about 80, 85,000 people a year with 65 in the general pool and 20,000 in the uh, advanced degrees uh, area, you're going to see that by in substantially increasing the H-1B visa, it would help you recruit, like, reach that criteria demanded by the resolution and help you get positive impacts because of increased in tech and other things that H-1B visa hope holders help provide to the American economy. All right, another popular one, this I think is going to be one of the more popular arguments on the F is the abolition of ICE. It has a huge public support on the idea of ICE should be abolished and it has really massive impacts such as civilian distrust link chains that could link chain all the way to economic collapse, nuclear war, or like any other policy argument. Uh, race or inter-immigrant war link chain, which could again lead to civil war, economic collapse, all those big impacts that you want to see, or public backlash. Again, link chains the same way into race or immigrant war. You're going to see that 
abolishing ICE helps prevent these things and saying that doing nothing in the status quo would be lead to these things if we allow ICE to continue. All right, another thing that is to consider is asylum. And even though asylum has been regarded as more of an illegal form of immigration, because it's people that are saying that people who are illegally immigrating are trying to find asylum, there are plenty of people who are illegally immigrating for the sake of asylum. So they also help lead to impacts and those can also be link chained into really big impacts like holy wars, genocide and civil war because these people are fleeing persecution based on political affiliation, sexual orientation and gender identity, religious affiliation, those things that could be really touchy if we deny asylum based off those things. All right, now the potential arguments on the neg. So H1B that bad. So H1B also has fairly ne negative consequences by increasing it because people have stated that it harps, hurts American workers. So you could link that to economic collapse, unemployment, civil unrest. You could lead it to American brain drain, which you know, cause those things as well as hegemony bad arguments, authoritarian oppression and consolidation of power from corporations and the government. So you see it that there are potential ways to mitigate of the reasons why we shouldn't increase H1B. Asylum negatives, they're fairly generic asylum arguments, such as asylum fosters dependency on the state. The process of receiving asylum requires survivors to relive trauma, which is bad, and this marginalizes asylum people who receive asylum as victims. And this will work more with a philosophical rate framework, whereas one that's more impact dependent, but this is a very good block against or a neg case to have in your back pocket in case someone reads an asylum ad. And one of my favorite arguments coming out here is the counter plan split ICE into two instead of abolition. So the sub agencies of ICE, the HSI and the ERO are both fairly specialized and fairly independent of each other. So if you were to fragment ICE into these two agencies and make them their own agencies, this would increase transparency, increase accountability, increase efficiency, since both will not have to refer to the other in order to do their own specialized jobs, and as well as destroy the stigma of ICE itself, since the stigma of ICE is actually has more harms than I, the agency itself. So if you get rid of the name of the agency without getting rid of the agency itself, that helps defeat a lot of the problems that the abolish ICE movement would try to mitigate. And so it really competes well with the app and mitigates the offensive link chains on at the abolition side. All right, so that's for the video, guys. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Jeff out.